So I'm here in Seattle at the Coise uh, Dental CE Center with um, Dr. Doug Thompson. Um, we're going to have several different uh, videos from this area. Uh, I, this one is on the uh, WatchPad device and testing. I've done a couple of them on the WatchPad already the, as a patient. Uh, first, describing my results. Um, well, actually, first describing how to use the uh, the device, and then second, how to uh, interpret my own results. So we're going to get a different interpretation from Doug. Um, <clears throat> but first, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E this channel is about helping people prevent the major killers and disablers in this uh, country and the world, uh, heart attack, stroke, dis uh, dementia. Uh, Doug uh, is the head, he's a dentist, he's the head and founder of the Wellness Dentistry Network. As you see, there's the logo in the background, and you may have seen Doug already on a couple of our videos. Doug, do you want to talk a few minutes about the, um, uh, the WatchPad study sure. that we just did and maybe in help interpret some of the results that we found? Sure. Thanks, Ford. Uh, what I wanted to do is just basically show you. Dentists have a pretty unique opportunity today in doing some screening uh, of our patients so that we could collaborate with physicians about uh, these events. So this watch pad is basically something that the patient can wear at home at night. It's a real simple report. Um, basically, this report will provide us with quite a bit of uh, pretty neat information um, this report will give us an idea if the patient is having uh, trouble breathing at night. Uh, it'll give us an idea if the patient has sleep apnea or if they have some sort of uh, breathing, um, breathing disordered sleep. And it's very nice because once we uh, go through that, we can give the patient a lot of help. So all patients should be screened for either sleep apnea or for uh, a breathing disorder that could be affecting their health and their heart. So here we learn about their, their apnea index, their uh, respiratory disturbance index, and quite a bit of other things that I know Ford's talked to you about uh, in the past as far as the details of the report. Very valuable piece of information for screening. So, Doug, you may want to go over a couple of these visuals on here and then just maybe briefly talk about what this study showed. I think there was some... Uh, it looked like there was some good REM sleep for this patient. That was clearly not a problem. But this patient typically sleeps three and a half to four, four and a half hours a night. Yeah, and this, this actual report that was on the screen earlier shows that this patient has, has suggests that this patient has uh, moderate sleep apnea with um, 24 times an hour, uh, having a cessation of breathing. Um, and an oxygen desaturation more than 4%. So uh, we look at the numbers and the graphs on these uh, in very much detail to uh, show, determine. Can you point out on this graph? Yeah, the, some of the, uh, yeah this box right here is the box where we get the, both a, a, an RDI, a respiratory disturbance index, uh, we get a, a, a apnea, hypopnea index, and we get an oxygen desaturation index. So very important to look at these numbers, and you can see these numbers greater than 5 uh, usually suggest that um, this patient would benefit from a more uh, in-depth look at their sleep quality. So uh, this patient's having some significant, th their hypopnea is what, uh, 23? 23. And the normal cutoff is 5. Me what does that mean? 23 It just what? means that 23 times, uh, 23 times an hour, uh, they're not breathing uh, for uh, more than 5 seconds, and um, they're not breathing. They're not getting a good uh, respiratory exchange. So is that obstruction of the airway, or is that we, central? Or we can't what? tell. We can't tell from this report exactly what that is. So this is why, as a screening tool, we would uh, either employ a sleep physician or uh, somebody else that would do a more detailed, uh, detailed study. So this is a great screening study for us. So it's a screening device. Uh, you do it. I had mine with another dentist. Mm -hmm. um, Dentists will do that risk, this routinely. Do they do that in all states of the country? No, we have to be careful because some states uh, don't uh, allow the ability to use this type of report. So check uh, your local, uh, check your local uh, laws in your state and uh, make sure that it's, uh, it's okay for you to do as a screening tool. 
So any comments about the literature behind that, the scientific evidence? There's evidently some debate around it, some debate about around the dentist's role, or it wouldn't have been outlawed in a couple of states. Any yeah, that, comments about I'm not really sure with the, uh, the exact uh, channels and avenues of how uh, politically it either uh, is or isn't allowed in dentistry, but um, it's something that uh, it's a very, very valuable tool that we can use. And again, we're using it for screening. So, uh, actually, final question. Uh, Roger Price is here. He's mm -hmm. uh, done a lot of work in terms of uh, uh, breathing components and breathing uh, difficulties. I think from my discussions with Roger, and Roger and I will be doing some videos later, um, he would say, look, there's a lot to just training the person how to manage their own breathing. Any comments about this specific study and where that may well, this is what's happening at night. One of the things we want to focus on uh, and what Roger will probably talk to us about is how we breathe during the day and how our behavior might affect how we breathe during the day that can ultimately lead to uh, and have an impact on how we breathe at night. Very good. Thank you, Doug. Thanks, Ford. Appreciate it. And thanks for your interest.